Hello, welcome to Chatbox with Sam. Tonight's guest is actor, producer and writer, Cory Nemec. Cory Nemec has played in roles as Parker Lewis, Rotten Tales, Stephen King's The Stand, Supernatural and Stargate and many others. He's currently wrote a series called Blackwater Blues, which hopefully will be out shortly. I hope you enjoy tonight's show. <laughs> yeah, what's happening? How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, thanks. Good, good. So the first question is, if you were to encourage the younger generation, what would be the main focus? I, I probably have to say, and uh, probably like creative writing, arts, things like that, you know, uh, um, outlets that kind of challenge you to, uh, you know, to, to think outside the box. Uh, and I, I think that the, the creative writing and, and arts, uh, whether it, even if it's even if it's pottery or something or wood carving or anything, you know, it just it challenges you to think uh, uh, to think a little differently. I think that that's that would probably be a, the main focus that I would use. Oh, what would bring you to that decision? Oh, just just because I just I just know from even back in, in in elementary school, junior high, high school, all of that. You know, my my best uh, experiences from from being in school were in my art classes um, and in the writing classes that I was in. You know, the the the, the best times that I had were in those classes. So uh, that's just what makes me think of that. Yeah. Okay. Um... What inspired you into this career with regarding acting? Yeah, uh, I, it was just um, I, I really was the movie The Goonies. My, you know, my dad worked on the movie Goonies. And uh, when I saw I had been on sets with him, uh, he's a production designer and I'd been on sets with him. And uh, and I understood the dynamics of filmmaking to a certain degree. And, and, and when that movie came out, I was close to the same age as the actors in it and just understood that 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 they were pretending and that this was a fake world that they were in but it was you know just it just inspired me to want to go and pretend on that level you know other than you know when me and my buddies were back in the woods playing Dungeons and Dragons or or whatever else you know mm -hmm. with with sticks for swords you know it was just uh uh it was that same kind of experience but in a much more realistic environment Oh, okay. And your mother? Um, yeah, my mom was a graphic designer. She worked in the in the music and and theater business. Uh, re really, just uh, you know, another artist, just similar to to, to my my dad. Uh, so I, I was raised, you know, with with art in my blood, basically. You know, so. Um, uh, being raised in in those creative environments, I was just inspired to to stay in that uh, that industry. And uh, my sister is also in the industry as well as as a uh, assistant director. So, um, oh, yeah, we just we just you know it just happened that way. Just how you know how it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And what about your graffiti art? How old was you when you first started? graffiti in places <laughs> um i was probably 11 years old really i'd say i mean 10 10 kind of but really 11 when i when when i started kind of taking it seriously uh was you know that that was the age and about music has music influenced your life at all and where are the rap songs <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know. I still have they're 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 somewhere right back here behind me in a in a in a in a, in a tub. Uh, they uh, I, I still don't have the digital uh, whatever it is the transfer thing for it. Uh, one of the tapes also I need to fix. It's that the tape has broken. I need to figure out a way to get it back together. But anyway, uh, that you know, yeah, music was always a big influence in my life because my mom uh, again, you know, she was in the music business before she got into um, uh, doing graphic design in the theater business. So um, th there was always music going on around our house and we hung out with musicians and uh, 
uh, that was, uh, that was definitely a major factor, um, you know, in, in my life growing up. I mean, I, I and I know that, uh, the, the, the Bob Marley collection that my mom had, she had all of his albums, which weren't that many, but, but, uh, uh, as when we were growing up and, and those were like my favorite albums to listen to when, when I was uh, allowed to listen to the record collection. Is your favorite song, Three Little Birds? Um, I think, I mean, I shot the sheriff is really on one of the, on the top of the list. Cause that, that, uh, that chorus on it and that, that, that baseline on it is just absolutely outrageous. Uh, and, uh, you know, also the band war, uh, that was another, my second, you know, a- after, uh, Bob Marley was war was the, 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 those albums I was listening to all the time. World is a ghetto is another one of my favorite songs. What a track. Yeah. They bring memories. Music yeah. does, I think. Question: What well, out of all the charities, which one would you be more likely to donate to, and why? Um, probably most likely, uh, like direct type of stuff, like direct to local food banks for uh, for uh, underprivileged or homeless uh, things like that. Stuff that I know that that I, I, w- I would know exactly where the money is going and 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 what it's going to instead of uh, of of going towards some of the more bigger, you know, bigger ones that use fundraising corporations to, to raise money for them that are really only giving 10% of the money that they're raising to the actual, you know, exactly. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. The, 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 so, so what it is that you want to support. So I, I would probably focus more on my local community and what, what I could do. Uh, like, you know, for instance, uh, uh, we were just talking recently with uh, Billy Miller, um, who's uh uh in the in the blackwater blues tv blues. show black character of ripley he's also well known down here in the local ocean springs mississippi community he was uh, in the music business for a little bit himself uh uh and back in the years and and but was a, a well-known attorney down here and um uh you know we're so so we're setting up a, probably some type of of uh fundraiser screening for Blackwater Blues when we finish the whole thing up that will raise money for one of the local, really local uh, charities that deals directly with the, the community uh, homeless problem or not homeless problem, but, you know, people who are, are, are in between houses. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great thing because there's a lot of people without homes and yeah. we, we live in a society where it shouldn't be that way. Well, last no one should be hungry. Yeah. And, and last year for a lot of people, it certainly impacted uh, a lot of people uh, pretty heavily uh, uh, financially. And so, you know, there's some people for, for, for no really reason of their own, except for the circumstances of, 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 the, of the financial climate, and, you know, uh, mm-hmm. found themselves in difficult situations. Yeah, so, sure. you know, that, that, that's kind of my, you know, so my point is, is I would say if, if you have that extra uh, uh, cash or have the ability to lend time or anything to anything like that. I would look at what's what's close by. How do you feel about what has transpired since COVID, and do you ever see us returning to a normality? Yeah, I, you know, it, the, the, it's a tough call. Uh, uh, in, in all, for me anyway, I think that uh, that, that once something gets gets politicized at, to a certain degree that and and uh and, and there's a lot of leverage uh that, that can be used um uh by a by a certain kind of class uh and and uh and, and um control structure of uh you know of, of our society on, on on in every country here I, I noticed that it breaks down a lot a lot better because each state we still have a lot of um uh you know your own power uh, within your own state. So uh, state by state, it's the, there's been a different effect. But when you look at it worldwide, what's you know what they're doing in Canada and the UK and Europe and other places uh, where there's this kind of blanket control over over the whole entire uh, place from one end to the other, it's uh, uh, you know it's pretty wild to see to to see uh, uh, mm-hmm. how much how much control that there that there is. Uh, over people's livelihood, you know, and and I think that's what it boils down to for me is just uh, giving people the the ability to, uh, you know, especially those who really want to 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 work for a living and do and do what it is that they love to do and 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 take the necessary precautions that they feel there are 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 needed to take, uh, especially in private businesses and such. So, uh, 
you know, it's tough. I, 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 I mean, I see things in certain states, you know, here in the U.S. are totally back to what one would call normal, you know, for the most yeah. part. Um, and and again, it's it's always, you know, and, and even in those even in some of the, the states that are that are pretty much back to normal. Uh, there's still private businesses there that that are still going by other other types of guidelines and stuff, and and you you either respect the you know the wishes of the of the private business owner or don't go to the business, you know. So yeah, uh, you know, I it it, it is uh, it has been an interesting time though. That's I'll end it with that. I understand people having fear, um, especially when it first came out, but um, along with the fear it did become political and hopefully with all viruses they do mutate but our immune systems are adapt to um fight them yeah the is there anything that no one has ever asked you in an interview that you would have liked them to ask you and can you please share N- no actually uh, <laughs> come on Corin. <laughs> Been more things that, that I've been asked that I'd rather have not been asked than there has been things that I wish I would have been asked. No, I, it's been uh, uh, in all the interviews that I've done over the many years that I've, I've been in the business. There's definitely probably not one that's that, that has not been touched on that I can think of. Oh, so you've had someone someone ask you something you didn't want them to ask you. What was that? <laughs> Oh, who knows? I mean, mostly when it just gets into more kind of just personal just relationship it. type stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a no. That kind no. of stuff. I'm like, eh. Oh, no, it's not necessarily no go for some people. It's, you know. Would you like to share a little bit about what's going on with Blackwater Blues? I know you've got a project going on in Mississippi right now, and you've just done a teaser with Blackwater Blues with Jason. Well, we, did a, we actually shot the whole pilot. Uh, you know, we, we, we were able to put together enough to, to shoot a half hour pilot. We had a one hour pilot written, uh, but because it's kind of a dark comedy, I'm thinking mm-hmm. that that in reality, it, it will probably it, it might potentially play better in a half hour format, which is what Parker Lewis was uh, as, as well back in the day. Uh, and and, you know, you, so you can get quite a bit of information out there in a very quick, uh, in a very quick way that's, that's entertaining and, uh, and has a, and has a very rapid pace to it without having to, to stretch out a story over, over a whole entire hour, which is not a problem. I mean, we already have the, the hour script was already written and, uh, uh, several mm-hmm. other episodes have already been uh, written as well. So in a way it's actually kind of more difficult to backtrack on where we've what we've done in, in, in the pre-production previously to shooting the, uh, uh, the, the half hour version. Uh, originally we were thinking about potentially shooting a teaser. Uh, we changed directors and, and we went in a different direction. Uh, mm-hmm. and that became shooting this, you know, this, this, uh, half hour version that I had come up with. Um, oh. and, and through, yes. Yeah, so, so through, uh, a lot of, of pre-production and preparation and uh, and rehearsal and 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 uh, and a great team. Uh, Steve Wise, the director, and and uh, uh, the team that he brought the the great uh, the cinematographer and uh, uh, and everybody else who came aboard. All the actors, um, uh, the other producers, Brad J, especially locally, he really really came through. Um, mm-hmm. We had a you know really great team that was doing all kinds of stuff, uh, especially on the uh, uh, the social media side and all of that. You know, I mean, everything yeah. was just moving forward and keeping the traction and, and it really worked out. Uh, but the three days, you know, being able to, uh, shoot what you would normally shoot in about a five day period to crunch it down and, and make it happen in three days. And, uh, and there might be a couple of things we might have to go back and cap capture a couple of insert shots of, we don't know yet until the edit is done. Uh, but, uh, which is happening right now. Um, there, there is a bit of, we were ahead of schedule for a short time and now we've kind of, gotten back to where uh, you know uh, uh we you know where we where we probably would have been had we not been ahead of schedule so things kind of mm-hmm. slowed down a tiny bit because uh uh they, we're working remotely the director is in pensacola the editor oh. is in atlanta uh you know producers are spread out from la to to mississippi and uh and so the all of that communication across those, you know, those different channels and having not being able to just be in one room and do the editing and just be a part of it. That that's obviously, you know, slowed things down a little bit, but, mm-hmm. yeah. but all the footage, the footage looks fantastic. Um, 
uh, everything you know is really going to color time uh, great. The uh, it's going to edit together really smoothly. I've, I've watched the dailies and uh, they you know they captured all, everything we need. You know, so yeah, uh, I'm I'm excited. I think that I think that we're going to have a really strong um, pilot. Uh, and mm-hmm. and if uh, if they want to do an hour version, then we'll just go back and 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 we'll have to shoot you know what wasn't there. Um, yeah. Uh, from the script that we didn't uh, that, that, that we cut out from the mm-hmm. from the one hour version, which uh, well, which will become the next half hour pilot, the half hour version. And it, you look like you had a good team going there, and and when you all get on well, it, <laughs> things. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. You wrote the script when you interviewed Jason London. From the Love America tour, it, I mean that's when the when, you know seeing Jason London and and us talking creatively, uh, you know, uh, and and it made sense um, similar to uh, 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 when me and David Foster, you know, came together and did Starving, and we did a couple other movies together. Uh, the, you know, it makes sense when you have somebody who's who has uh, uh, the the talent that he has and 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 mm-hmm. the background that we have together to try and figure out a way to do something together. So, uh, uh, and I'm just a fan of, of series work. I just like the consistency of it, uh, the stability of it and, and being able to tell a much longer, more detailed story. So, uh, uh, you know, for me, it was a no brainer for us to figure something out and that's just what came out of it, you know? So you must have enjoyed Rotten Tales. You said it was supposed to be a comedy. Rather yeah, than... yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Rotten Tail is a horror comedy. I mean, that's what it was always supposed to be, and uh, and and is. You know, it just wasn't exactly marketed that way by the distribution company. Uh, uh, but uh, but you know that that I mean, it's you know, I I think it's I think it's funny. <laughs> I know, and a lot of people yeah. know you from Jonas Quinn on Stargate. I love sure. sci-fi. So that's one of my favorite uh, things. Is Stargate? I used to watch that all the time. So yeah, it's uh, it's on Netflix right now. So supernatural. Uh, I know so, supernatural is yeah, awesome. Everybody can, everybody can go watch and check out some, some work out there. You did so. You played a good guy in Stargate and a bad guy in Supernatural. Well, uh, you know, maybe I always like to say he was misunderstood, but <laughs> maybe aren't we all? <laughs> yes, it's not not at that slide. What would you prefer to play though, the good guy or the bad guy? Do you like to have a mixture of both? Uh, I, I I like both. I mean, it's you know really a lot of times uh, when you play the the so called bad guy, there's there's a little bit more dimension to the character uh, mm-hmm. than than uh, than there tends to be sometimes when you play the you know the 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 good guy who who I mean generally a lot of times the good guy unless it's kind of an anti hero type uh, is is a little bit more predictable, you know. Is is there any um, any role that you've played that you've brought your own personality, or you could see your own personality reflecting in that? And how did how did it make it easier to play the role? Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, I, I think that there's that that factors in quite a bit with Jonas Quinn, probably more so than some of the other characters that I've played. But uh, but all every character that I play has some elements of uh, of of some part of me, you know, or potentiality or something, you know, I mean, it's a, uh, but, uh, but I would certainly say that, that, that probably Jonas Quinn was, was a little closer to uh, uh, my, my personality than, than a lot of the other characters that I've played. Well, Colin, you know, the women always swim over Jonas Quinn. <laughs> 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 True story. Hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I just wanted to touch on just the Love America tour because, um, especially the Lat Fam and the people, um, yeah, the unity that came from Fast that. Yeah, I, I think love it. That is like legendary. Um, the friendships yeah, that have been formed from it. I, I noticed you did the Love America tour in the height of in the the very first beginning of covid when everyone was scared so nobody was, it was sort really, of like right at the way, height of that whole thing yes way. Like, so it was very brave of you to do that because nobody wanted to support it because of their fear of going out in public and yet you and chad kinsey went out there anyway and scott yeah 
And Scott, Scott sorry, D. Scott. Her, yes, Scotty D. You did a GoFundMe. You took your, you took the the Red Baroness out. You got an RV. You went out there. You met the public. You respected them with masks or or if they didn't want to wear one. You met right. Ryan that passed away, and you 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 created this documentary really in the yeah. height of covid showing that when you never ever caught covid in in going around all them people no 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 i didn't but you no, did, did, did. so throughout all that separation and quarantine you brought a unity to people on and offline and you and your main focus was well, it's just to let, you know telling people's story finding the through line and people's stories to show the similarities that we have, uh, that we, there's a lot more similarities in, in our stories than there than there are differences. Yes, and and there's a lot of unity come from it, and the Lat Fam love you. Have you got any message for the Lat Fam at the moment regarding round two? Or yeah, I mean, I I, I would just say keep, keep keep the faith on that because you know it's it's something that I would really love to do, but the the, the reality of doing it, it you know, mm. and doing it right is just it's so far above what that initial fundraiser and we and we squeezed yeah. the fundraiser as hard as we possibly could uh and uh yeah you know i, I think that uh it's it's hard pressed to realize just how much it takes that goes into a production even even a traveling reality show production like you'd say like american pickers or something like that mm -hmm. you might only see the two characters and and kind of the guest stars that go in and out when they travel to different places looking at antiques or whatever but you don't realize that there's you know a, a two a two person sound team a, you know a three person mm -hmm. camera team maybe two maybe maybe a five person camera team because they have two cameras running all the time mm -hmm. and 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 you know a traveling produ several traveling producers who are there you know normally on the reality shows a producer does the directing side of it so it's not really a director uh, you know, a directorial role that you play, at, you know, on the reality shows necessarily yeah. uh, on the, on that side of things. But, uh, but there's so, there's so many, you know, there's, there's, there's lots of different vehicles that are traveling. There's, there's not just one RV, there's probably two or three, you know, mm -hmm. and, or, or at least two and it's some travel cars and, you know, and all of that just, it, you know, that's the reality of, of doing it in a yeah. way where you could actually t kind of tell the whole story or it has to be brought down to to something even even more simple and more bare than that. and has to be slowed way down instead of trying to cover that much ground. It would have to be a much slower you know, approach with with a really, really tight, small uh, team. But uh, but again, like you like you understand the editing side of things, the post production is. So keep, keep the faith. Just know that uh, that uh, uh, that at some point I'm going to figure out some way to 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 make that uh, that that journey uh, continue. Uh, you know, uh, and uh, and I don't know what I don't know who all will be involved or or how will how will approach it this next time. But uh, but I still I I still would like to, to, to make that happen again. I think it's, I think it's important to, to, uh, uh, to kind of pursue that deeper and see where it leads. Absolutely. So, well, that's awesome. Have you got any, yeah. any plans for the future to return to, um, for any more roles? Are you looking for any more roles? Um, yeah, of course. I mean, you know, I, I think that, I mean, I've been trying to hang on to this longish hair as long as possible because <laughs> uh, of, of Blackwater blues, uh, uh, I've already had to cut things back a tiny bit, but, you know, I mean, I cut all that beard off and everything. So, you know, that'll you have did. to be dealt with at some point. But, yeah, I mean, I had auditions that I had to do that just couldn't didn't call for, you know, Duck Dynasty. So. Um, <laughs> so oh, uh, wow. We'll, we'll see what happens. You know, we'll see what happens. But I, I do have, a, a you know, I mean, another film in development that I'm, I'm, I'm working as a producer on as well with uh Oh. Uh, twerk films who I, I did the movie uh, day labor with them down in mexico last year that'll be coming out later on uh hopefully uh later on this year uh, if not early next year danny aurora yeah. and, and gary carins gary yeah exactly yeah gary carins yeah great great guys um and uh um so and brian skiba uh as well will be directing that who directed rotten tail uh so um uh, you know but hopefully that'll be uh, that'll be in production sooner rather than later. I can tell you that. Yes, I hope so. Gary's so look out for my fairy tale is out there. They're just you know it's it's, it's streaming oh, on yes. different platforms right now, so people can check that out. Go to 
my true T fairy tale uh you can look that up on on Twitter and and, and uh, Instagram and, uh, and and check out that movie. It's a very 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 lovely uh, independent film I did with uh, uh, Dimitri, who's a great great director and uh, really interesting movie. So hopefully uh, a lot of people will go and check that out. Yes, for all the viewers, Karin is on Twitter at I'm Karin Nemik. He is on Instagram, but he's not on Facebook, no. even though he's got even though he's got an account on there. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's there. It's sort of like it's stale it's like gravestone. <laughs> oh gosh, you're laughing. Eh? Well, well, you know, this... yeah, I, I loved having the chat. Thank you so much. We'll do it again. For you're welcome. Sure. Uh, okay. And uh, and my best to everybody out there. And you too. And you take care. We'll do, Sam. <laughs>